Welcome back to 2% Football Camp. I'm Eduardo Cecilia. And today we're gonna start translating all our content from the Spanish channel. Today we're gonna talk about the concept of head count, which is a simple tool used by offenses to increase their yard average. Of course, the Spanish version of this video is already available in this link. And just sorry in advance, I couldn't take a couple of Spanish words out of the graphics. So just ignore those. <laughs> The hat count has two main purposes. The first one comes in a scenario where down and distance and play clock are not factors for our play calling decisions. In this case, it will help us identify what type of play has a higher chance of succeeding, a pass or a run. The second purpose of it is once we do know that, it will help us determine what part of the defense we should attack and how. As you might tell, this little tool will simply help the average yards per play for every offense. Why do we put so much emphasis on the yards per play? Well, as we know, we have 4 downs to obtain 10 yards. But normally the last one is always used to punt, so we normally only have 3 plays. Therefore, if we have plays that give us more than 3.3 yards, we can consider those plays successful, since if we multiply that by 3, we'll get our first down. It's simple math. So if we constantly find ourselves in situations where we're not losing yards, but we are actually winning either these 3.3 yards or even more, we're gonna find ourselves as a team in beneficial scenarios that majority of the time. In order to determine if we should run or we should pass, we will first start by counting the players in the first two levels of the defense inside the box. We will assume that any player in the third level or 10 yards away from the ball will not be able to stop the impact of a play rapidly. After doing that, we're gonna start by counting our own players inside the box that could potentially block in case we run the ball. Once we have these two numbers, we're gonna do a simple equation. To the defensive number, we're gonna subtract one. And to this total, we're gonna subtract our offensive number. If that is equal to zero or any positive number, we'll know that the probabilities of a successful run will be higher. In the other hand, if the total is negative numbers, then the math will tell us that the chances are in our side if we decide to pass. An audible is a signal or a keyword that helps the offensive players communicate when they want to make a change before the play. Quarterbacks use them often to change from either a pass to a run, from a run to a pass, or to change the way they want to attack the defense. They can also use them to determine what the defense is trying to do before the play so they can have even a better execution. In the case where we are executing a running play, when it's time to do the equation we just talked about, we always subtract one to the defense because normally, every running concept avoids the backside player who's farther away from the ball. This is because we don't expect him to get there in time since we're running to the other side of the field. This is why when we have the same number of blockers in the box as the defenders, it pretty much means that we have an advantage of one blocker because even when they have one more than us, it doesn't really count because we're not gonna touch him since he is so far away from the play. That's when the equation is equal to zero. We can assume that whenever that player makes the tackle, we have obtained at least the 3.3 yards. Because of the same reason, we don't take into account the third level players. As we know, their first priority is pass coverage responsibilities. So they will start backpedaling by the beginning of the play, which creates us a space of more than 10 yards. As a result of this, whenever we run, when they decide to come down and tackle us, it's gonna be too late. If we execute our blocks correctly and the running back run through the hole, they should be going way beyond that 3.3 goal we have in mind before even hitting a safety. Now, if they have the numbers on their side and the equation is negative numbers, the running situation gets complicated. Since we know even if we don't block the backside defender, they're still gonna have an unblocked defender on the box that's probably gonna tackle a running back. And we can't really always expect a running back to shake away free from a tackle. So we can instantly assume that our percentage when it comes to probabilities of a successful pass play are gonna increase in a big way. For a passing concept or a specific route to be successful, against any defense we have to be aware of what kind of pass coverage we're facing, since every cover has its different weaknesses. We'll talk about this in future videos. However, in this video we're gonna talk about some automatic passes and screens that we can predict to be successful using the headcount tool. All of these will be based on the simple equation we discussed previously and the original position of the defensive backs. In this case we only want to talk about passes that can be executed by only receivers or running backs. Because of this we won't talk about any type of screen that uses any linemen. 
First off, we got the tunnel screen, which we'll use in a situation where the cornerback is four or five yards apart from our outside receiver, while whoever is responsible for our slot receiver is 10 or more yards apart, in this case, the strong safety. This will allow us to throw the ball to our outside receiver who's coming back to the ball while using our inside man to go block the cornerback. From then on, it's just expecting your receiver to make a play on such a big space. Next up, we got the bubble screen. This one will be thrown to our inside receiver, who's being covered by someone who's 10 yards or more away from the ball, while our receiver takes care of the cornerback and blocks him. Next up, we got the running back crack screen. On this play, we'll have the inside receiver doing the crack block to the closest defender in the second level, while our outside receiver is gonna block his cornerback. This will create space and a matchup of a one-on-one -on -one of the running back against the safety. Next up, we got the quote-unquote automatic pitches. On this play, it's just a one-step throw where we just focus on the initial stance of the defender. For example, if the cornerback is providing a cushion of six or more yards, let's say in a cover three defense, we can just take the easy five-yard hitch. Or for example, if there's a safe on the third level and whoever is responsible for covering our slot receiver is inside the box we can still take that automatic hitch and last but not least we're gonna include the quote-unquote automatic flat as an option some people may call it arrow and this is executed in a situation where we have three receivers on one side and we have a numbers advantage because there's two or less defenders in the area That's it for today, don't forget to subscribe, once again I'm Eduardo Cecilia and this was 2% Football Camp.